Good morning. I'm Pastor Mary Beth and I'm here at the Trempolo United Methodist Church. This is Sunday, November 15th, 2020, and I'm going to invite you to do something that I often do at the beginning of worship when we're in person. I'd like you to just take a nice deep breath in and exhale and let go of anything that isn't serving you right now. In the second letter to the people of Corinth, Paul expresses gratitude that any arguments between him and the people, it's healing well. Any, any problems they had, it, it's healing well. Now this relationship didn't just magically mend itself. It took hard work on all sides and substantial assistance from a man named Titus. Restoring this relationship between Paul and the church in Corinth required getting to it and not putting it off and working at it every day, working diligently. And I want to read for you this scripture. It comes from um, 2 Corinthians 6, 1 through 10, and I'm reading from the Message Version of the Bible. Companions as we are in this work with you, we beg you, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life that God has given us. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time, the day you helped me. I was there to help. Well, now is the right time to listen, the day to be helped. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work by showing up late, throwing a question mark over everything we're doing. Our work as God's servants gets validated, or not, in the details. May these words from Paul bless you this week. Now, in the movie, Something's Gotta Give, Diane Keaton, who plays Erica, the divorced mom, tells her daughter, played by Amanda Peet, that she's in love. And she says, with tears streaming down her face, Erica reveals that it is so hard, this love is so hard, but it's so worth it. She tells her daughter, I had the time of my life. And her daughter quietly responds and says, I've never had the time of my life. And Erica takes her hands and she looks deeply into her daughter's eyes and she says, What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? As this pandemic goes on and on, I'm finding it rather easy to put things off. Maybe you are too. I'll eat more vegetables when I can shop properly again. I'll shampoo the carpets when the family can actually get together. I just needed to get the election behind me. I couldn't concentrate until the weather got colder, or warmer, or drier. I'm not motivated with, the, with these days getting so short. I like that one, because what am I going to do, wait until spring? We put a lot of things off, let's face it. The baseboards still aren't on. The half-knit sweater. The paint waiting to find its way to the bathroom walls. I'm not sure what color towels are going to go with that. The 10 pounds, the mammogram, the broken motor. The morning walk, that one phone call. Now sometimes it helps to set deadline, to deadlines, to put it on the calendar. Though that doesn't work for a man named Douglas Adams, and this is what he says about deadlines. I love deadlines. I love the whooshing noise they make as they go by. Now one of the assignments that I recently given to the confirmants was to explore their hearts and see what they could maybe use a little bit less of in their lives. The point of this assignment was to bring John Wesley's teachings about abstinence and um, the value of abstinence into our modern lives. The kids took it to heart and they reported back as they were comfortable doing so about the things that they felt in their life they, um, that it would serve them better to cut back on. Now, one gal, her name is Macy, and she's given me permission to, to share her story. She said that she realized, as she was thinking about this, that she procrastinates and she wanted to be better about not procrastinating. So the first week after we had this assignment, I asked her how it was going and she told me, she said, Pastor, she said that very first day, I decided that I would start the very next day. There's a quote from an unknown procrastinator, Macy, that says, procrastinator, no, I save all my homework until the last minute because I'll be older and I'll be wiser then. But when Paul begged his listeners to not squander this life that God gave them, he was crawling into their brains and he was recognizing how doggone easy it is to put things off. 
even important things like getting along with people, like reconciling, like forgiving, like praying, and like listening for God's voice. Now something else that we've been talking about in confirmation is that you can't have a relationship with somebody that you don't know. So here's God hanging around wishing we would notice, wishing we would pay attention, wishing that we would talk to him. There's God wishing we would have more interest in learning about God's actions in history. There's God longing us to show us his son, his flesh and blood, blood son, the divine one, the one who will help us and hold us and show us how to live and how to love and how to forgive and how to lead and how to get things done. There's God. Now I said a t-shirt, I saw a t-shirt this week that said, tomorrow, now, it's a noun. A mystical land where 99% of all human productivity, motivation, and achievement is stored. Now we can put off nearly anything. Well, not birthing the baby, but that's an exception. Some of it isn't too big of a deal. I'll coast through the leaky faucet in the kitchen. The leaves left on the lawn are pretty small potatoes. Spark plugs, the flu shot. Well, don't put that one off. These things are energy suckers, but they won't probably affect our long-term happiness or well-being too much. But building a better relationship with God, that's a different deal entirely. This is where none of the old excuses work anymore. Like, I've been meaning to, or I'm too busy. Do you realize that just 15 minutes a day adds up to almost eight hours a month? Or I'm too old, or young, or unworthy, or uninformed, or sad, or angry, or happy, fill in the blank. But the number one driver for not only not finishing something, but not even starting something is this. I won't do it well enough. Well, guess what? God doesn't care. You can't possibly disappoint our generous Lord by even the clumsiest attempts at drawing closer to God. Be curious about it. Be uncomfortable. Be self-conscious even. Feel a little faky. You might, but show up. Especially in these days of worshiping God in new ways apart from each other, we have to take personal and family time for cozying up with this eternal friend that we have. Now our to-do lists are long and God knows they are pretty endless, but I believe that there are three things that Jesus would have us do today and tomorrow and every day after that. And the number one thing that I think that Jesus would very much like us to start is to be the best that we can be. Nobody can be a better Mary Beth than I can. So it's pretty much up to me. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul said this, listen to this. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Be the best you, you that you can be by asking for help from the God who can help you do that. Number two, be thankful. Again, I turn to Paul, who is grateful, notoriously grateful, in some of the worst circumstances like jail and shipwrecks and beatings and Roman oppression. He says this to the Thessalonians, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you, you who belong to Christ Jesus. And the third thing that I believe that Jesus would have us do right now and later and every day, number three, is something nice for someone else. We just finished four weeks of a series called Hashtag Love Your Neighbor. We talked a lot about agape love, active servant love, helping hand love based on the love that God has for us. Earlier, we heard Paul's declaration that our work as God's servants gets validated or not in the details. So in the weeks to come, I encourage you to 
go ahead and check stuff off your list. Keep her moving, if any of you listen to the Manitowoc Minute. Go ahead and tackle that sourdough starter. Clean the garage. Clip the dog's toenails. But please be sure and make your relationship with the one who, who loves you more than anything else top priority. What are you waiting for? Will you join me in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may you go into your week peacefully. May you go knowing that Jesus Christ walks with you and leads you. Go knowing that the Holy Spirit meets you in the stillness of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.